So hello everybody here and welcome in the Zoom call. And of course, if you're watching YouTube, um, you would be wondering, you'll be wondering right now, who the hell are these guys? We don't know them. So, but that will change really quickly because um, these are three soloists of the Triple Concerto of Beethoven that was sent recently to me in, believe it or not, whole beat tempo. And so uh, there is no reason on earth why we would not go to these courageous people. And we have a lot of things to ask and just to uh, share probably. So before we start firing our questions, and I know Alberta has a lot. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we give him a, a chance for you to uh, just quickly introduce yourself because I think people who are watching now are burning to know who we are talking to. Okay, go ahead. Okay, who first? Mindogas first. He is the oldest. Yeah, okay. There's a respect hierarchy, of course. <laughs> yes. We are all of the, for that well, here in the channel. That's the reason. All right. So, should I? I'm very sorry, but I'm driving. It's a quite a long way, but so maybe the quality of, of the connection is not so good. But perfect. Anyway, uh, I'm Chavez. I live in, uh, in Clypeda, Lithuania. And uh, um, yeah, I'm a leader of Clypeda Chamber Orchestra. And, and uh, I, I joined this performance uh, with my colleagues, uh, uh, let me say by accident, because uh, I know uh, that Wilhelm was very much interested in this double beat practice. And uh, I mean, in general, this the whole historical um, issue. And uh, so he came up with this idea to, to perform and to, to see what, what can happen, what, how the music changes. and and. I mean, just in general, he got, and I got a bit interested in that, actually. And so I thought, yeah, well, I will join it. And I still think um, that the biggest uh, uh, thing we, we should we should uh, do is to be open to everything. Uh, that uh, if we are open, then we, we might do our best uh, doing stuff. It doesn't really matter a single or double uh, beat, but I think in general, to be a musician is it means to be open. I, I just actually I, I I realized that people are have a huge inertia from the past, from their childhood, or from things that they do. And I just realized that after one month playing Beethoven in in, in double beat, um, one day I. I put on a YouTube recording of very, very a single beat. And I thought, oh my goodness, how fast that is. Are they crazy or something? And and so, and but before, but before uh, of many years, I, uh, I performed and, uh, and listened to it. And it, 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 so I think things that, but uh, let's be open to everything. So. Okay. Yeah. You were disconnected a little bit at the yeah, end, but, but I guess... Got, uh, we got uh, the, the yeah. message, yeah. Yeah. Great, great. Okay. Okay. Now probably, yeah, probably me. Uh, see, there was some years ago, I was supposed to play bit, maybe eight years ago, nine years ago, I was supposed to uh, supposed to play better in Triple Concerto. I, stud I started to study it, and I understood that I do not understand this music. Of course, I knew that music. Uh, and uh, the same happened with uh, uh, violin concerto, Beethoven concerto. Yeah, I'm almost 44. And I'm playing uh, violin. I'm concertizing uh, since I was uh, 10, my debut with National Symphony, when I was 10. And I never played Beethoven violin concerto on the stage because I realized that I do not understand this music. I can play, of course, uh, a la high fits. I can play a la whatever. Yeah, and I used to play at home, and that's the reason that I never played on the stage. I played very little on the stage Bach. I played not much uh, Mozart because and well, but I was the guy all my life that if written is allegro, I will play allegro assai or or or, or more. If it's play presto, I'll play prestissimo. I was the guy that liked very fast tempos okay. and still do like. And talking to and, me, uh, by the way. Yeah. 
And uh, some uh, three years ago or so, I, um, I noticed your channel, uh, Authentic Sound, and I started to listen. What the hell is that double beat thing? Because I, I well, I never paid attention to metronome numbers. I, I mean, you know, like yeah. like many musicians, like like many musicians. It was quite a while about ago, some years ago. I remember that we are in an exchange of emails since I have no idea, but it's yeah. That was my first time when I saw your 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 channel. I wrote you and uh, I asked you about the the the. the the Seventh Symphony Beethoven, I asked you about the triple concerto. Then you send me the uh, turn the metronome numbers of the triple concerto, of the triple concerto. And of course, I uh, I was starting to 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 play them, and uh, I said this is something something strange, especially for the last movement. Last movement in single beat would be fifty two. And double beat, it's it's a, a 104 journey, right? It's 52. Polonaise 52. No, it's it's in my opinion very slow. But uh, the first movement and the second movement, of course, it seemed to me pretty nice. And I started as 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 you will say, I I dived into it a little more. I I started to to watch your your videos a lot, and I started to to. To think that perhaps we do not know something, perhaps we miss something in in in, in school, in our musical training. Then uh, uh, I was gonna play that concerto with with other artists, with other orchestra. I was supposed to play, yeah. uh, by the way, in uh, Mindaugas festival some three years ago, two years ago, two and a half, or something like that. And I don't know. Should I, Mindog, Should I say say, say that uh, what what happened with the cellist without names, of course, or not? No, you you you, you could say whatever you want, but uh, but uh, I think the the most interesting stuff about uh, about this uh, three years ago issue was that the National Symphony Orchestra, Lithuanian National Symphony Orchestra, they they were quite positive about it, and and especially conductor, uh, he was uh, he was listening to all all your ideas. And then, in the end, when we had this performance, uh, uh, then it wasn't double beat, but it was, uh, I would say, rather, rather close to it. And uh, and public and, and the orchestra took it very positively. And I think that's a good sign, anyway. What do you think? Anyway, so just to, to, to put you at ease, we are all in for intrigues here. Eh? So, <laughs> the yeah. more, more picturesque stories. No, just kidding. <laughs> It's, but, it's an interesting story. But, uh, uh, what what what? Uh, another detail: uh, the day of the concert, uh, cellist left. He couldn't uh, couldn't agree with that, and Mindaugas had to find the same the concert day. He had to find a new. Um, now we are we are skipping the rounds of uh, introduction. With uh, we would like to talk to the pianist, of course. But now this is interesting. What was the reason? Was it just because of principle, or had he troubles with the musical results? Uh, it's hard to say, but of course, it it, it for him was strange. Uh, although he is great cellist, absolutely great cellist, a musician. He lives in Germany, and I mean, beautiful. He plays beautifully. But uh, I think he couldn't stand this, and he left. He disappeared. So uh, it's quite a statement, then eh? the day of the concert. So. Yeah, the day of the concert uh, is five hours until until the concert. But uh, okay, so now I stop at this, I stop at this point, and uh, I'd like to introduce our, our pianist. Yeah, and then we continue that story, isn't but it? It's like a disappearing five hours before your marriage. Like you don't show to the <laughs> church. It's like a bye. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, my name is Motieus. Uh, I'm a, a pianist in in this uh, our trio, uh, and. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a guy who who, who is open-minded for, for and I, I think enough flexible to try things in music, and uh, and why not to try? Because because I, I I think there is no no harm at all to to try uh, to experiment. And I don't know my background, of course. 
I'm a classical pianist, but uh, but I, I I have a lot of experience in playing rock music, uh, jazz also, uh, some electronic things. So I think my my po point of view is quite broad. In, in, yeah, and uh, and uh, talking about this uh, single double beat things, I I just. Uh, remembered one situation in my childhood when I was practicing some journey attitudes of Opus 299. <laughs> the Opus 299. I was really... Uh, yeah, so, so it's, no, it's just funny because every time that I, you want to see the real problem, you just go there. It's like school yeah, of, yeah. for beginners and none of us professional pianists can, can play that. So, <laughs> But the thing is, you know, uh, I think attitude number 19, and when you look at the metronome and it's marked... Uh, with uh, half notes and the number is such that uh, I think if according this this metronome your uh, right hand should you, you, you cannot see fingers then because it, it goes like this and, and I think you, you, you must see about 10 or more fingers uh, you know at, at once uh, by one axle <laughs> you know so it's it's really hardly possible to, to do that and I just thought that you know maybe some ad addition mistake or or something like and, and uh, yeah so 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 that's what I faced myself yeah Cheney was used to make a lot of those mistakes so don't worry but it's... interestingly <laughs> I, I, I hope so I hope you're so playing, but you're no. playing then this issue and figuring out this metronome mark which is on its own remarkable because most people just don't even look at it did you did you come to the solution there or a possible idea if you took your metronome that it but because some people just it happens like that they take their metronome they put on the metronome certainly in the case of the chernietus and without knowing they play in whole beat because it's still pretty fast in whole beat did yeah. something similar happen to you or at that time i i just solved it you know without without any any knowledge that uh, what what could be similar to the single double yeah. beat theory uh, so i just i just played uh, as fast as i can but of course it it didn't met that number and and, and that speed yeah, but I just uh, thought that this is uh, a mistake. Oh, what can so when really Wilhelmus happen? came with uh, Wilhelmus, I'm sorry, came with this idea, you were instantly reminded of that moment of journey, probably like, oh, this could be a solution, or was there a connection, or not, not directly? I, I think uh, that was it was our discussion, and of course Wilhelmus. Uh, told me about this journey metronome and then I just oh, okay so things got connected then <laughs> and mm. yeah and uh, of course a, a lot of uh, nice things about about music what we discussed is you know it's not not about the tempo itself but about more more about articulation and how you how you produce your sound and how you approach to, to musical ideas is That's an interesting, the most important thing. an interesting point, and maybe the most important thing. And we were listening before the uh, before our call to your recording, and you can actually—it's unbelievable. Alberto was saying also, like, there's a point where you hear the orchestra folk come together. They have just discovered it. I mean, it's a very high-level recording. Yeah. But there is one moment at the very beginning where you say, "Okay, now they are really enjoying it. They feel the pulse. They feel how to do the bowings." It, it, you you need a lot of adjustment. That's what some people seem not to understand. That playing yeah. in whole beat requires another approach. So maybe you can share some experiences. Uh, and certainly, don't forget to end the story of the cellist who left because yeah, we want to know, of course, how this ended. Okay, so uh, in in a few few words about that story. So the cellist uh, left uh, a few hours before concert. Mindogas uh, found another one, uh, <laughs> and that the other one cellist hadn't played that concerto for a few years maybe so he was pretty shocked about it but he did a good job but what is um, uh, what was uh, most important as Mindogas uh, said that Lithuanian National Symphony Orchestra and his uh, chief conductor our friend Modestas Pitrenas great conductor great musician uh, great man 
uh, they 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 played. Uh, they did not refuse to do that, and they well, we didn't play as as you said in double beat. We played uh, much slower, of course, but it wasn't in double beat. But the orchestra and concertmaster and other people they said it's very interesting. That's that's really interesting. But the idea, my idea, was uh, to make to 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 study really and to play. Uh, really double beat, whole beat with all the bowings, with all the character. And uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm a chief of uh, one small town chamber orchestra. It's a Shaolay town. Just a few years I started to work with them. Mindel was many years works with, with Klaipeda Chamber Orchestra, very good orchestra, very professional. And uh, I told him, let's do the triple with uh, metronomes and the whole beat. And uh, I made the orchestration only for strings, as you saw in the video. Yeah. Only for strings and, of course, timpani. Uh, so in that slow tempo, in that double beat, in that whole beat, uh, we started actually on 126 uh, exactly. And then, of course, we, 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 we reached 150, maybe in the middle of the first movement, and then again 126, uh, recapitulation. But I found, as you say, this bowings, the character, the, the the different 16th note, absolutely, absolutely different music than than, than the usual sounds uh, on the on the on the recordings of of great orchestras of the best orchestras in the world, you know, and uh, and you hear this 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 character, these different characters of every section of first theme, of second theme, of of whatever of cadences. And uh, the second movement, we, we played even slower than, than, than Sheridan wrote. Uh, he wrote uh, 104, we played maybe 96. In the, in I guess the... that wasn't too much of a shock because that movement typically is played very close to whole. Beat. So yes, we exactly. We checked the very famous recording with Karajan Rich, Teroy Srach and Rostropovich. And they play about a 62 um, single beat. In, in single beat. So in this, uh, it will be 50, 54 and they play 62. So Yes, yes, and uh, Mindogas. Remember, I uh, well, I, I used to I used to talk with with Mindogas a lot and 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 send all all kinds of, and I said, okay, first and the third movement, everybody plays fast, and the second movement, for some reason, everybody plays in almost double beat. So where is the 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 what is the reason of that? By the no. way, the opposite of what people say, that it will never work for slow movements, but they never realize that many slow movements today are played really, really, really close to whole beat. If not, yeah. it's on. It's are the fast movements that are really like all prestige. But okay, continue. Exactly, exactly. And uh, so uh, the third movement, for my taste, uh, 52 or 104, uh, Cherny 104, 52 in, in, in single beat, that Polonaise was too slow. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine that. For me, it was the tempo not right. So we played in about, uh, in about uh, 67 instead of 52, 67 up to 80, up to 80, which is, which is normal. And then again, but in the recapitulation on the last page, if you noticed, in the last page, we played 52. Dum, 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 da, da, dum, bum, da, 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 da. On purpose or it just happened? No, of course, uh, in a purpose. It, it didn't happen. I wanted once that theme, I wanted to play in a exact metronomic chain you wrote in double with 52. And then all these figures... Taram 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 and then it makes sense another another it's it's a polka Johann Strauss polka you know boom 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 so uh okay I'm I'm talking too much maybe no it's 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 pretty interesting very interesting yeah you're there where we want to be. We want to hear your experiences. I mean, of course. My my personal experience is great with, with this. Uh, you didn't have a problem technically because that's what we hear all the time. Like violin players, string players, oh, of course, they can't have, cannot do the bowing. It will not work. So you didn't have really something that you said this is... I had to solve some musical, musical problems or challenges like 
what you were talking about. No, no of course. But the technique was all fine. No, absolutely, because because also another thing, we play it uh, more or less. I'm I'm not saying authentic like like a Louis Spohr school violin school, right? Yeah. But in his school, also some years ago, I wrote you. In his school, there was no uh, spiccato as we do today. There was no data. There was in the upper upper uh, bow uh, side. Tuck, 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 so the all this staccato thing that wasn't supposed to play fast and 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 flying like if it's like we play Tchaikovsky last moment yeah there, there's, that's why we change a little bit bowings and it worked perfectly and of course we talked with Mindelgas uh, and he very open minded he's absolutely great great cellist he can play whatever he did before he played in P last St. Petersburg that concerto in a normal single beat with no absolute problem yeah but uh, now we played in that other other character and I think we we opened many things for for us I don't know my personal opinion it's interesting by the way we should we should really introduce a new term for modern performances because we say single beat performances as if those performances are yeah. a single beat, and that's confusing to a lot of people. They say, yeah, but this whole beat is, you take everything half tempo. We should say maybe mainstream tempo or something like that. Yeah, because know. there's no consistency on the other. It, it's There's no such a thing as a single beat performance. We think it's single beat because it's very fast, but it, there's no really like something as a single beat practice. So literally people, musicians taking those methods, numbers and applying them constantly in a single beat and that's why today's musicians don't even know about the metro numbers because they know that there is a problem if there wasn't any problem we wouldn't even have this discussion about uh, yeah but the impression well, yeah. is awakened that very fast performances yeah. are I mean Douglas, I just muted you because you were driving over some rough uh, territory I think like Actually, the subject that, that we're talking about, it's, like, it's actually a visualization of, uh, yeah. of the... Yeah, so that's the one thing that uh, that uh, we always uh, uh, encounter. Like, the, there's this idea that um, uh, the mainstream performance is indeed based on those metro numbers in a single beat, while uh, it's not like that. Uh, there are pieces that we can play in a single beat, yes, but... Uh, not not all of them, and uh, that's where the metro number uh, um, problem comes from. Because there are clearly many metro numbers that are problematic, both uh, technically but also musically. So yeah, but that's, that's just thing. as a side remark, of course. Yeah, it's, of course. Uh, it's something that just remi I reminded myself to that. It's um, something that's interesting about the last movement, the decision to play it a little faster. I can imagine that. I mean. As a pianist or a soloist, you, you have all the luxury to try things out for months and months and months. But I guess when you have your orchestra or your, um, yeah, you have a few rehearsals and it needs to work. And so, I mean, the history I have with this, I was also not converted to a complete, I would say, Lorenz Guardian style as Alberto was completely there of the first day. So some movements feel just a little bit more easy when you just speed them up a little bit, not much. The strange thing, the strange thing, however, is that when you're used to listen or to work with this tempo like we are now quite some time, you immediately hear that in the last movement. I'm not saying it's too fast, but you look at the score and you say, you hear suddenly the musicians work a lot, like make drills happening. And so there is like this, this Allegro Molto, maybe Allegro Asai feeling that you say rightfully at the end, it's there, it's like more like in uh, like this movement. So even though you didn't mm -hmm. over uh, play a lot faster, there is still this change in character. And that's maybe you can elaborate a little bit on this, what your experience is that if you are close to this tempi, that's at least a feeling I have, the small changes you do matter a lot. They have a huge impact suddenly, which is, I mean, not to criticize your decision to play it a little faster, either, but it's just, it's remarkable actually to me. I don't know what your experience is in this. I can, I can say uh, 
also continuing about this what what was our, our uh, experience and, and 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 feeling when playing uh, what i would would like to empath em emphasize that uh, playing slower is not easier is is opposite i mean there there were a lot of uh, you know semi quavers passages that could really go much more easier when you play faster and 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 your articulation is is different and and of course to keep up all the tension and your projection where are you going and and this is and, and all this like concentration your focus on things it, it is it's really challenging actually yeah yeah and, and especially uh, when this is like I don't know, the the last quarter of the piece of the whole composition mm. you really need to concentrate yourself and, and did you feel uh, more exposed now in this tempo as a pianist uh, I, I just felt and experienced new new things like uh, for example to to make uh, some 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 semi quavers passages uh, uh, proper in that tempo is it's it's really it requires not less of of technical uh, abilities and of course and, and then you invent more articulation things because the notes every single note should be you know really shaped <laughs> and 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 as a single note and also in groups and everything and of course we were experimenting a lot on 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 these articulations for example how how piano could uh, approach the string thing also, yeah. uh, and uh, and I, I was also I was asked to to do some things and and we, we we also I think just freed our mind on experimenting on how how we we could we could go on on these things and how we can change you know also these stereotypical piano things as as an instrument. Yeah, and or or maybe to dive us more deep into into this realm of 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 this old uh, old music, but also you know old instruments because the instrument was was really different from yeah. nowadays instrument. Yeah, and that is also really important thing, and especially when when playing in the bass. You know what I also have heard from your records, and when you do this on authentic piano, that that the bass strings uh, and and it's it's much more sharp. Uh, the sound yeah. is much sharper, and 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 uh, we we also need to to imagine that what Beethoven heard himself of how the piano sounded, and and that's also important to maybe to try to a little bit adjust that the timbre of, of, of a piano of course from from finger perspective not not yeah. change the piano on, on voicing but but uh, how you can approach that speci specific sound yeah. it's interesting to hear you say that because certainly from a perspective of a pianist um, people say often like these Viennese pianofortes are pretty fast. You can play much faster on them. That's absolutely not true. They are like you feel when you come to them as as a, as, as a Steinway pianist, you feel handicapped. The keys are much smaller. It's all like tiny, and the key depth is much less, and they have no aftertouch. So suddenly you feel like really, and and also the pianists do not allow to absorb a lot of weight. So when you have big chords or you have to jump, you have to prepare them because otherwise you can stop the recording and tune the piano. So, but they have one advantage, that's they have a very fast tone production. It's like almost like a clavichord, just boom, and it's there. Whereas on the Steinway, you might have the same feeling as a listener, but as a player, there is this feeling of, there is just this huge hammer that needs to bounce against this huge string that's under an enormous pressure. So the, 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 the amount of energy you need to make sound on the Steinway is more. Um, that's, of course, almost unnoticeable, but you can feel it. And the differences you talk about, about making shape of the notes, articulation, every individual quality of the notes, for that, a pianoforte would be um, 
partly a solution. It, it can be done on the Steinway. I'm absolutely not against playing Beethoven or Bach on a modern instrument, but there maybe more than just the balance of the piano, which you can regulate on the Steinway, which you don't have to worry about on, on an authentic instrument, but that's manageable. But the individual articulation quality that you, you must al almost bring it, I think, to a Glenn Gold level, yeah. like to have this yeah. direct, pro direct attack. And, but I have to say you did a really, really wonderful job. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually unbelievable, all of you. <laughs> I mean, uh, let's not give lectures on piano forte touch and Steinway touch here, but it's, it's, well, are these things actually that, that you need to address and what you say is so important uh, that you were just open for it. Like uh, I sometimes think like it's our job. You hear you have a metronome mark, make it work <laughs> and then it works. <laughs> so but also what, what I want also to, to, uh, to say that uh, <coughs> why I'm talking about these technical aspects, because I'm also a piano tuner and restorer myself. And mm -hmm. I'm really amazed about, um, uh, about some tendencies, what I can what I can say, or some trends, what you know all these old constructions are coming back. We have uh, Mr. Uh, Barenboim with his new invention of uh, straight string piano. Yes, I know that. And th this is amazing thing because th this construction of of you know not cross things was really uh, forget forgotten. And also, there are some experiments about uh, the of of some of some uh, manufacturers that they can adjust with the lever. You can do the key, key depth a little bit, uh, not not so deep. Uh, what yeah. can reproduce these old instruments? And uh, of course, there's some uh, jokes, and maybe not 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 jokes, but for example, to to play. Uh, the, f the finale of uh, Beethoven's the 21st sonata, uh, Aurora, you can do uh, glissandos with octaves on old uh, type pianoforte, what, what you cannot do on modern one, because you just harm yourself. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, it's not harmless on the forte piano too, either. Yeah. It works in the upper range, but when you go down and go up, I mean, uh, we have tried this this particular passage a lot, and actually there is uh, Bulow. It's actually weird that Bulow writes that it's a glissando, which then you are on the German English action pianos, which really you don't want to play mm -hmm. without aftertouch, but the key dip like 15 meters before you reach the bottom of the key. And there you have to do the glissando. Czerny actually writes something different. He points to uh, another passage in the, in, the opus, in the Opus 500, which is part four where he refers to a list passage, but he refers also to another passage in parts two or one or three, I don't mm -hmm. know, where he speaks about Schleifen, which is really one five, one five, and you go like legato, but you really have your wrist out of the key, you have this movement. Yeah, it's not literally like a sliding uh, um, uh, to the um, to the next key. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, there is a little bit of a release and uh, repercussion, but then But I get your uh, point, it's, yeah. it's like, these old instruments help you do these kinds of yeah. things. That's true. On, on imagine, to imagine things, and you know the, the the point that we are discussing about these things. We we are talking about these old technologies, uh, and that is really relevant for this. And for example, uh, I in my classroom when, where where I teach, you know, I have modern Yamaha and I have a Blutner piano. Of, uh, 1895 with this Blutner patent and you know the experience and uh, playing this this piano is, is really different in, mm -hmm. in all in in all aspects I mean uh, uh, the touch and also the distribution of sound and and you can do things better better uh, in some music mm -hmm. uh, instead of modern piano yes. yeah well the thing is you have to when you play on a modern piano you have to translate you have to convert some things and that's it for me personally, but it shouldn't go about what me personally is. And I, I think that that the early music movement is important in this way that it introduced a lot of the historical uh, instruments. And by by far, not all of them. We have to diversify much more, I think. But anyways, it's a great asset. But I don't think that it's are the instruments only that can guide you to really an authentic performance, because guess what? You can also play much faster on the piano. So. 
if there is no tendency to reconstruct the foundation of a musical performance, regardless which which uh, which uh, domain you want to touch, that's tempo. So tempo decides everything, and so yeah, then an instrument will not help you because it's there, helpless uh, to just. Yeah try to obey to everything. And then you see also, but that will be too much as a digression, that a lot of modern copies of forte pianos are just adjusted to speed with lesser key depth. With uh, the Viennese pianos, you see them with, with weight in the keys to just fall back faster for repeat, repeated notes and things like that. So um, there is a lot of, you know, <laughs> People will say, yeah, but you're dogmatic. It's not that. It's just you have to be willing to go back there to 0, 0.0 to say, okay, now let's see what we can do. And then from there, you can fill in the blanks yeah. wherever you want. But uh, not compromise before you reach pounds uh, up uh, the zenith point. You know what I mean? I have a question for uh, for you guys, if you can answer, I don't know, but like, what were the impressions of the musicians in the orchestra playing at this time? Did they have any difficulties? What Were they happy of doing this? Uh, I don't know if you can answer to this. Nindogas, I think, could, could answer. Well, uh, why me? But I mean, I, I can obviously answer. Since uh, the, the, the in general, uh, if the atmosphere and, and the relationship in the group is good, then people trust each other. And and when you invite them to do things like let's guys, guys let's let's do this. It's very interesting. And then everybody like a team, uh, you just try things, and and everybody are positive. And uh, obviously, if, if if it's a big symphony um, orchestra that changes conductors every year and 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 you have this routine of uh, performing things for the last 200 years and then maybe they might be not happy because they want to do the job that they used to and um, i think this is just psychology of the group but we are made we made two orchestras together that are small and uh, so small orchestras like 20 people uh, are, are more like a family. So you talk to everybody and you say, oh, guys, you know, we have an idea. And this idea is because of this and it, this. And uh, let's let's try all together. So people never uh, very negative about something. Mm. I think uh, some of them might be like confused, mm -hmm. but not uh, negative. But I, I just want to take a couple of seconds and, and say just a few things, uh, maybe two things that are important for me as a string player. Mm -hmm. well, I had an experience maybe five or, or, or six or seven years ago performing Beethoven cello sonatas with Hammerklavier. And I, I think this is one of those uh, extremely positive um, experiences when uh, the, 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 the Hammerklavier is, is fully open and in the places where uh, Beethoven says fortissimo, we actually both use put the same energy into the music and we are in a perfect balance mm -hmm. because everything that was before for example with the grand steinway uh, if 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 you put the, this fortissimo meaning uh, um, you know uh, it's it's always like you couldn't hear a cello and 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 yes i know that beethoven wrote the sonatas for 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 clavier and and cello so that meaning that maybe the, the piano is more important. But uh, I mean, in general, it, it was an amazing experience performing with Hammerklavier yeah. because it felt equal Yeah. in terms of uh, not only the volume, but also the, the, the quality of sound. So you don't have to get crazy to be hearable. But, but one thing very important that I play Brock cello. I, I was, uh, I, I liked that. I, I, so I went to study my third or fourth study was Brock cello in Utrecht and Amsterdam. Okay. And uh, I, I, I have, uh, I have, uh, I have Brock cello, got strings, Brock bows and things like that. I play it maybe twice a year when I have time. I play this Brock music, continual practice and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, if you take that Brock cello and you try to play the Beethoven music, like let's say triple concerto in these tempos in that in the bowings that are written in music it becomes almost impossible 
to keep that sound so, with such a tension, with such a slow bow, and to make these bowings in a in a double beat in some phrases that is just impossible. So I can imagine people playing that, but uh, maybe twice or three times softer, or maybe. Uh, or, or maybe the groups, the orchestras, obviously could been smaller or bigger. Or, but, uh, but I, it's so on the gut strings that becomes like I cannot imagine what kind of musician had to be then to be able to perform Beethoven's Concerto on gut strings and broke bows and that kind uh, in double beat and with that slurs that I'd written. Yeah. Uh, it's like a nightmare with the modern techniques, with the, with the, with synthetic strings, with long bows, and and you need to practice like hell, you know, to be able to go, you know, and to make it a good quality sound, and and then and then to be hearable together with the orchestra. So it's yeah. very interesting topic for conversation. It is, and it is also uh, what you say about techniques. These bowings and these slurs are often, I mean, I have no idea in this concerto, but it's like people have the idea that slurs mean one bowing or one breath. It's absolutely not. We will have in the book a lot of sources where, and actually Behrman, the clarinet school is very interesting on this, where it's becoming clear that you can have a long slur, but you have to make the motives clear. And every time the motive comes, you just breathe or you play chains bowing. And on the other hand, it's interesting what you say about sound projection because I think the solution is there in your answer. It, if you have a long bowing on a lighter bow or a baroque bow, you should make it softer, but that's of course extremely difficult. And you see that many of these three times in the 19th century, it's, they talk about long notes and practice long notes. We had once, um, a, not a direct conversation, but it was through our clarinetist Massimiliano Miani, who had a colleague with the Baroque violin. And he had actually the, another stand, he said, a low, the, 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 the lighter bow allows me to make one note of 36 seconds with no problem. I cannot do that on a modern violin. Of course, as you say, this is something we would really like to talk about with musicians and experiment and see where we end. That's, of course, obvious. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, Wilhelm, just, just, uh, just one second, please. I just want to react that I don't mean, I didn't mean that it's impossible to, to do slow bow opposite, but on the Brock, in the Brock music, you do a lot of slow bow. Yeah. But, uh, Playing Baroque concerto with Baroque cello with, for example, modern orchestra, it, it becomes impossible. Mm -hmm. And especially, I had that experience inviting people like Bruno Coxet, which is a great, great, great Baroque cellist with amazing sound uh, early instruments, the, the old instruments. And, uh, and with the modern orchestra, with modern instruments, that is wrong balance. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're talking about a balance more than the impossibility to do it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. That's that's an important uh, clarification. We will have the same thing. Uh, we are experimenting with some singers with Schubert songs. Yeah. And Alberto sometimes sent me some some WhatsApp recordings, and I tell him like, please, when you come, <laughs> mute the sound a little bit because these people are have been trained to like 100, percent but they will just obliterate the fritz. They will not even hear the piano anymore. People have, like you say, no idea how much softer how much clavier is compared to a modern piano. It's like not comparable. I could play in a concert hall on my Fritz, mm -hmm. and there comes Andra Schiff playing the same concert, and nobody would even notice that I'm playing, <laughs> even when he plays pianissimo. So that these instruments are really relatively soft. Yeah. I just would like to react in a few a few seconds about the slurs and 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 uh, dotted slurs. Of course, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean and Windows also they mean that it doesn't mean to play on one bow. It more phrase. It means more phrasing. Yeah, you Beethoven could write uh, legato for four bars. Of course, it's impossible to play. Yeah, but uh, also in his violin concerto, in his urtext, in his handwriting, yeah, he 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 wrote very little bowings. Mm -hmm. Actually, no legatos, nothing, nothing. So uh, all we have, we have editors, uh, Boeings and, and stuff like that. Also the dotted uh, line, legato line with, with dots, mm -hmm. 
many many cases means uh, espressivo, espressivo, even even with rhythmical changes, not ta 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 ta, but it could be ta 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 ta, which we modern artists we don't know these things uh, never yeah. never nobody thought us about these things you play Mozart tram ta tam pam pam tam pa pa pam and uh, and that time would be tram ta tam tar tar ti ra ra something like that with all these uh, ornaments what you would do in the Bach partita also you would yeah. learn tram ta 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 ti ta 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 pam pa pam pa you have the motives there clear it's the same in date of this time but this is actually why this music at, at this time then becomes extremely difficult it's exactly. not a matter of uh, how many notes per second you can play it's a matter how can you combine all these details together and make it still musically work for example we experience the same problem of bowings but when we have to play without pedals so you find the uh, uh, for example, a series of octaves when, to be played with one hand, and you cannot play a finger legato. You can, you don't have any pedal, and so how do you connect those? And uh, they, these are the things that have become really problematic uh, at this tempi, and uh, that's where the difficulty of playing uh, in well, problematic from modern perspective. The yeah, question then is exactly. on how did they play that passage? Yeah, of course. And so that's... problematic in the sense that we have to find a solution to, yeah. to make it work. Of yeah, course, yeah. So, yeah. I think we have to pay much more attention, uh, let's say, string players, uh, much more attention to, 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 let's say, to read Leopold Mozart school, to read uh, Spohr school. Yeah. Also, also uh, Klavikot, uh, Turk, and, and others, you, you have to read to, to, to know what's, 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 what's going on, you know, <laughs> with, yeah. with other instruments. But uh, as, I, as I see now with, with some of the best orchestras, best, best performance of the world, let's say string performance, of course, uh, we play with different uh, bowings, with different character, with, with different... Uh, th that's why we can play fast. But uh, if you... And with those modern bowings that uh, were, uh, we started to use uh, since uh, uh, the, the, the end of the 19th century, when Virtuosi, you know, our Heifetz Milstein and another. With these bowings, we cannot uh, do Beethoven, let's say in Beethoven's music, his dynamic. We cannot do Sforzandi, we cannot do Subito for the yeah. Subito Piano with these bowings. Uh, of course, we can do very fast tempos. That's what we can do. But let's say in triple concerto, probably Bindo has the only one cellist in the world at this moment that played everything. He played... Tam, tr -tr -tam, tr -tr -tam, tr -tr -tam, yeah. But this... Yeah, those trills, yeah. yeah. Those trills, the notes, and then uh, and again, you know. Otherwise, you otherwise if you if you see other performances in, in very fast tempos, they 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 do all kinds of things. They do wood bows, something like that, because it's impossible to play. It's impossible to play. And it's interesting because that passage, particularly, it's like the one where in the in the recording you feel that like you guys are a little bit above the the Chinese metronome because uh, uh, it works well, but when you arrive there, you really feel like you are on the press, so yeah. you are really on the edge and trying to make work so many. Yes, many and after those sixteenth note, I, I ask to on that a little bit to play a little bit uh, 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 slower, a little bit yeah. slower. And of course, if you if you see our performance performance. There are many tempos, many tempos. Yeah. In minor, one tempo. Tum, bum, tira, ram, para, ram, tara, ram. Tiri-ding, bum, bum, bum. And then. If you play in fast tempo, everybody play staccato. I mean, that's absolutely different. It's minore. Also, he writes espressivo. Beethoven writes espressivo in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if, if composer writes espressivo, he doesn't mean to, 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 to play short notes. Absolutely, he doesn't mean. So all these things, uh, we string players, and not only string players, and conductors also, we have to, 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 to take uh, 
great, uh, great, great uh, Demesis. Uh, attention. Okay. Attention. Was there a particular reason why you uh, transcribed the uh, the work for strings only, or mm. was it just a matter of availability of musicians? Well, we, will, uh, we were wondering why there are no woodwinds. Yes, there, there are a few, few reasons. Uh, one reason, of course, that uh, I do not have uh, symphony orchestras. I, 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 I work with, with uh, string orchestra. Okay. Bindogas also has string orchestra. So uh, that's one. Another thing, I hate what I hate. I hate the, 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 the fact that when you go to play on the tour, you, you have, like Wim said, you have one, two rehearsals and you, 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 you go and play. Yeah. We, I personally worked with this orchestra nine months. Every Boeing, every big, every everything, yeah. and and he knows that. Yeah, I, I was like crazy with with with, with that. I, I dived completely in this, you know. And also, I, I was gonna go. Uh, I, we had to perform Mozart's uh, for the for the first symphony, mm -hmm. but then we didn't. didn't also, um, but we didn't get a win, so we 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 didn't play that. Also, the new tempi. New tempo. Uh, that's the, the fastest tempo what could be for the last movement. Yes, here it's molto allegro, but mm. molto, it uh, means less than assai. It meant I think that. Your metronomization from Hummel, I think also Czerny made, Hummel made uh, metronomization for that scene, for those scenes. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't hear, but I think that it's, 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 uh, it's a uh, one and two. Um, one, you have the feeling, the experience also, that once you're there, you've experienced how it feels, that it's easy to reconstruct each tempi. I mean, you will have always like margins. But that's our experience that when we yeah. don't have metronome marks, we play and then later maybe we discover one or load and centers one and say, oh my God, we are really close. That you have this feeling of this, this color that works with the music. This color, also this contrapunct, also, you know, the, for the first symphony, last movement is the, the greatest example of, of his contrapuntal technique. It's the, probably in the, the greatest in, in all music. And if you play in our normal tempo, yes, it's very effective. If if performed well, it's very it's it's it's, it's nice. And that, but you lose the character. And as I say, molto allegro, it means a little bit allegro, but not assai. Assai, if he allegro assai, that meant. More allegro, but molto. It, except it's also it's alle breve. Alle brevo, it's 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 not fast movement. One and two and one but and. It means two slow pulses per bar. It's in it's just in in, in the alternative of the French would say like uh, uh, deux temps long ou quatre temps vite, and the tempo is exactly the same. The only thing is that you double the tempo in the pure eighth note alle breve, but you have the note value. The last is of course often omitted. <laughs> So when you have a 16 note movement with an alla breve sign, it's not an eighth note alla breve, it's a 16th note alla breve, but you still have the feeling of two slow pulses a bar, it's right. a little bit faster than common time, 16th note allegro. So you would go to, in the end of the 80s, I mean, 88, 92, something like yeah, that. Yeah, half not tonight. But all of this in the 19th century is super confusing. The book will have a large uh, chapter on this. It's one of, one of the, mis the biggest misconceptions, the term alla breve. That alla breve can mean multiple things. So that, another question. So actually it's not a question, you've answered it already. So that you have new projects in the uh, uh, coming up around what you've experienced now. It is, did this give you the energy to continue um, and do some other stuff in this way? Or it what was are you? just one nice stand with the whole no, 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 of course, of course. And I, uh, and I, um, we we write. Uh, I, I write uh, Lithuanian National Symphony. Uh, Chief, uh, our friend Modestas. Also, I send him all kinds of information. He writes me back. I mean, he he. For him, it's it's not that easy to 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 ex ex accept all this information. But uh, I'm trying to 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 explain why it could be this and why it should not like that. And it's many, 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 many things. As I say, you're starting from the Boeing technique. You're starting from 
only for the bowing technique and bowing technique it decides the, the, the tempo the tempo if we play as high fits I adore high fits it's my musical uh, god yeah I adore high fits but of course you can play faster but if you play like it used to be in the beginning of 19th century Germany or Austria especially on those two countries yeah, there was there were different bowings absolutely so okay. that's we have to, to, to keep in mind What's my phone? I'm sorry. We have something to add. Okay. We have a lot of things to talk about, I think, in the future. Let's uh, maybe for this recording and this introduction um, for the viewers also here on our channel, uh, say that they can enjoy your recording because we're going to share it yeah. uh, on the channel. So you will be world famous. Prepare for <laughs> an immense number of people to uh, masses of people going to Lithuania and just. Uh, you will wake up one morning opening your curtains line, and you see like a crowd of people like cheering like here he is. A crowd of girls outside for you guys. I'm a little bit joking, but it is really with musicians like you will, I mean, will will develop this idea more and it's desperately needing. Maybe desperate is maybe a big word, but if we want this, this new approach to really to be a thing, we will, the world needs musicians like you who say, listen, we're going to do this anyways, and we'll see where we come. This idea makes sense, I guess, for you. Um, and whatever happens, we're just happening. And maybe to come to close this, uh, this to, to, to make a nice conclusion, um, Alberto noticed what I was noticing too. All the musicians in your orchestra were just smiling when they play. They feel, they see, they very happy. Yeah, they seem very, very, very happy of doing that. And this uh, is maybe the most important point because if you see a lot of symphonic orchestras today, certainly the soloists, they are under a lot of pressure and you can see it on their faces. But here they had time to relax. And maybe today that's a, a thing that we say, yeah, but you have to practice, you have to suffer, you have to reach for the impossible. <laughs> but I think music was created for musicians to enjoy and to enjoy when they play together. And I think you proved this in a wonderful way. So yeah. we cannot wait for future um, talks and future projects to uh, to maybe work together or share, share them together or uh, who knows uh, when this pandemic is over. I yeah. mean, Lithuania is just two hours flights from... Yeah, from Berlin, so. yeah it's two hours flight. And I hope, I hope guys, yeah, we can we can think of something and, and Mindogas knows I'm, I'm really... I'm, uh, very, I, I dive very deep in, into this. Of course, I have, I have many questions. Uh, I still have many questions uh, about the same seventh symphony finale in, in double beat. For me, it's still uh, that's doubtable. Yeah. <laughs> that's really. I we are, we are about to, we are about to record that today. Yeah, but that's uh, <laughs> You have to see some peasants there. We're having I, fun, yeah, da, 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 jump, da, 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 and then I you have the feeling. I hear that. I hear that now. Of course, I, I hear that. And but I still okay. I still have questions, which is very good. And of I'm course. trying to 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 get answers. And uh, you know, uh, let's make and we like make the deal that we have regular of these conversations. Maybe not always record them, but uh, when we have something to share, because who knows who gets inspired by just hearing us talk about our experiences and say, "Listen, I'm going to do this as well." And so before we know, like we have a complete uh, whole beat universe here. Yeah. It's important. So uh, let's make the promise that we will keep in touch and um, well that we dive into all the questions that we have and maybe also connect you to Max Massimiliano Mia, yeah. the clarinet player. He is also doing this privately, mostly of course, uh, diving into this a lot. So he has of course more experience than we have in uh, with orchestral challenges. <laughs> and so that we create this uh, this group of musicians that say, listen, we want to just uh, Enjoy. Wait for the seventh symphony because we are gonna record that. Soon. I am waiting. I am waiting. And we'll then... share the result. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your for your time. Anyways. Thank you. Thank you guys for for, for your work and, and and really you 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 do great job. Great job. <laughs>